is Donald Trump using his lawyers to silence witnesses. Who is Stanley Woodward? I've talked about him on this show. Is Stanley Woodward silencing witnesses? Trump's lawyer? This is the mop up for August 23rd, 2023. I'm David Feldman, and I have a few corrections. I've gotten some things wrong in the past week. Uh, For example, last week I said I didn't think Donald Trump would surrender to the Fulton County District Attorney this week. I was wrong. I figured it was too heavy a lift for him, that there was going to be a bench warrant, and he would fight it out for months to drag the arraignment out for as long as possible. And it looks like he is indeed going to surrender. And there are, it seems, going to be mugshots. Again, I didn't think there would be mugshots. It looks like Donald Trump is going to get a mugshot. Uh, at least that's what we're hearing. Uh, John Eastman, one of the lawyers who was indicted last week, surrendered on, on, uh, on Tuesday. He uh, spent 90 minutes inside the Fulton County Jail. He was fingerprinted, and they took a mugshot. He posted $100,000 bond and left. So it looks like this is what's in store for Rudy, Jenna Ellis, and Donald Trump. Now, I've also said, uh, so I was wrong. He's, it looks like Donald Trump is going to show up Thursday for his arrest. It is an arrest. I also said that you should keep your eyes on Georgia, that that's the prize. That's really interesting. That's going to be the fun series of indictments, and it's going to be a fun criminal trial. And I, you know, I still stand by that. But I'm starting to think the trial down in Miami, special counsel Jack Smith's first criminal indictments, charging Trump with mishandling classified documents, violating the Espionage Act, and ordering his underlings at Mar-a-Lago to help him hide those documents from the FBI when they search Mar-a-Lago. I'm starting to understand that this is a lot more serious for Trump than I understood. Smith made it his first series of indictments because he wanted to put numbers on the board. It was the low-hanging fruit, the easy, the easy prey. Get those convictions first. And everyone knows and everyone's saying that this one down in Miami is a slam dunk. Trump is caught on tape dead to rights saying, I never declassified this war plan. I'm showing it to you anyway. Uh, You know, I never declassified it. I should have, but now it's too late. Here, take a look. Do I think he's going to go to prison for this? No, I don't. But he's going to get convicted. And the trial is going to expose just how insane Donald Trump truly is and how everyone enabled Donald Trump, from his gardeners to his attorney general, from his valet to his national security advisors, up and down the food chain. Everybody knew Donald Trump was insane, but for some reason they all enabled him. His valet, his gardener, his attorney general. Why? Why? I'm going to talk about that later on this morning. I still believe during Wednesday's big debates in Milwaukee that Chris Christie is going to be hammering the other candidates over how they expect to be commander in chief, but can't bring themselves to say Donald Trump is guilty of a clear violation of the Espionage Act for violating, uh, for, you know, mishandling these classified documents. So I predict, and I'll correct myself if I'm wrong, I think if you're going to watch Chris Christie uh, at the debates, uh, more than January 6th, he'll be hammering Donald Trump over the classified materials because Republican voters don't care about January 6th. They're glad it happened. They care about national security. And I'm guessing Christie is going to talk less about January 6th and more about the classified documents. He's going to ask each of these candidates, you want to be commander in chief, but you can't bring yourself to admit that Donald Trump violated the Espionage Act? Is this the kind of cowardice we want in the Oval Office? And I think he's going to get a lot of applause because Trump's people won't be in the audience. I don't even think his spinners 
uh, Kimberly Gargoyle and Don Jr. were supposed to be in the spin room. And from what I just heard, Fox has told them they're not welcome there. So this is going to be a different audience. The cheers, you're going to hear a lot of cheering for Chris Christie as well as Vivak Ramaswamy. He's going to be the breakout star from the debates. He's worse than Trump. He is actually, wor he's more dangerous than Trump. He's a Harvard Law School graduate. He's young. He's got the fire in the belly. And he's going to try to come across as the heir apparent to the MAGA movement. Okay, keep your eye on Vivek Ramaswamy. Everybody's going to be talking about him after the debate. Finally, let me get back to this big story coming out of Miami this morning, because this is what I think is really important right now. Now, Trump faces 40 charges down in Miami for mishandling those classified documents. He was initially indicted, along with his valet, Walt Nauta, who was indicted for helping him hide the documents from the FBI, the cover-up. And then, if you remember this month, there was a superseding indictment. They added one on. They indicted Carlos de Oliveira. He's a maintenance worker over at Mar-a-Lago. They indicted him for participating, helping Walt Mata, Trump's valet, hide the documents from the FBI. The FBI was coming to search the place and Trump allegedly said, hide them. Okay. Why did they add Carlos de Oliveira just this month? Why the superseding indictment? Well, this is huge. This is huge. And it involves Stanley Woodward, the lawyer. Uh, Tuesday, prosecutors, federal prosecutors, filed with the courts saying that they got the IT manager down at Mar-a-Lago, the guy in charge of the surveillance on the ground at Mar-a-Lago, they got him to flip. That's how they got the maintenance worker, Carlos de Oliveira. That's how they got the superseding indictment. He named Carlos de Oliveira. This is much bigger than just getting the maintenance worker we're dealing with a valet and a maintenance worker so far in the classified documents case. Do you think it stops there? Okay, the IT guy just flipped. The guy who, you know, sat in front of the cameras at Mar-a-Lago looking for crimes. Okay, Stanley Woodward. Remember Stanley Woodward? He's the lawyer on retainer for all of Trump's low-level associates who need to testify or in Walt Nauta's case, or Carlos de Oliveira's case, uh, uh, when they've been indicted. So the IT manager who just flipped, he too was handled by Stanley Woodward. Stanley Woodward, the lawyer on retainer, paid by the Save America PAC, Donald Trump's super PAC. They pay Stanley Woodward for the low-level underlings who either have to testify or get indicted. Trump was paying his IT manager's legal fees, the guy in charge of the surveillance cameras at Mar-a-Lago. He had to testify before the grand jury about the mishandling of these documents, and he testified. He had Stanley Woodward as his attorney. This was before he flipped. Before he flipped the IT manager with Stanley Woodward as his lawyer, went before the grand jury and testified, no, nope, there was nothing to see, nothing on the surveillance cameras. I saw nothing. And nobody, I didn't see anybody try to hide boxes and nobody tried to erase the tapes. I'm in charge of the tapes. Nobody came to me and said, erase these tapes. That's what he testified under oath before Jack Smith's Washington, D.C. grand jury. The trial's in Miami, but this is what the IT manager said before the Washington, D.C. 
grand jury. And that upset Eileen Cannon, the judge in all this. She wanted to know why Jack Smith was keeping that grand jury going. But anyway, Stanley Woodward, the lawyer, brought the IT manager, from what we've been reading, he, he brought the IT manager to the grand jury, held his hand, lawyered for him, and the IT manager lied under oath and said, I'm in charge of the surveillance cameras. I didn't see anybody moving any boxes and nobody told me to erase the tapes. And then he had a come to Jesus moment, the IT manager. He, he, he knew apparently that he lied under oath and he asked for a new lawyer. He said, I have no money. I can't afford Stanley Woodward. Trump is paying Stanley Woodward for me. I need a public defender. They gave him a public defender, and he flipped. He turned state's evidence. This is huge. Stanley Woodward was his attorney. Why did he have to fire Stanley Woodward as his attorney in order to flip? Very bad. It makes Stanley Woodward look very bad. Conflict of interest. Who is he really working for? He's working for the person who's paying his salary, Donald Trump. So this IT manager is going to testify now that he lied under oath because his lawyer was Stanley Woodward and he was being paid. His legal fees were being paid through Donald Trump. This is really bad. It's huge. It's proof that Donald Trump is paying legal fees to shut his close associates up. And it suggests, as I've been saying for at least a month, that something isn't right with attorney Stanley Woodward. He seems to be handling all of Trump's low-level flunkies including Kelly, I'll talk about Kelly Meggs from the Oath Keepers later. He's handling all of Trump's low-level flunkies this year, including one of the Oath Keepers doing time for seditious conspiracy. Who paid his legal fees when he was handling one of the Oath Keepers who's doing time right now for seditious conspiracy? This guy, Stanley Woodward handles Trump's gardener at Mar-a-Lago, Walt Nalta, his valet. He was handling the IT guy until the IT guy wanted to flip and turn state's evidence. All these low-level flunkies at Mar-a-Lago, they had their legal fees paid by Trump and they were represented by Stanley Woodward. Why was Stanley Woodward also representing an oath keeper? who was on the ground at the Capitol on January 6th. The same guy who texted his wife after Trump purportedly lost, after he was told Trump lost, said, I want to go on a killing spree in Nancy Pelosi's first. Why was Stanley Woodward defending an oath keeper? And who paid Stanley Woodward to defend that oath keeper? This is a conflict of interest. Is Stanley Woodward handling only Trump and silencing his other clients? I don't know. That's what people are. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm thinking. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. And Jack Smith doesn't think it looks good either. The special counsel doesn't think it looks good. He's, he suggested in Tuesday's filing that Stanley Woodward has a conflict of interest. Again, why did this IT manager at Mar-a-Lago only flip once Stanley Woodward was no longer his attorney? What kind of silence does Trump purchase by paying his underlings legal fees? And once again, why was Stanley Woodward defending one of the Oath Keepers currently doing, I think, 13 years for seditious conspiracy. I'll dive into that later so we all understand it. 
Also, the Durham report and the Mueller report. How, how are they connected to all this? If you're like me, you're confused by the Durham report. It came out in May. I'll explain to you what the Durham report is and what it has to do, perhaps, with all these indictments. Okay, another correction on yesterday's program. I said that Bernardo Arevalo was elected president of Guatemala on Monday, and I got that right. What I got completely wrong was confusing Guatemala with Ecuador. I said that one of the other leading candidates for president had been assassinated in Guatemala. That is wrong. There was an assassination in Ecuador, not Guatemala. I was wrong. On August 9th of this year in Ecuador, not Guatemala, the trade unionist, journalist, and presidential candidate Fernando Villavicencio was assassinated. He was not running for president of Guatemala. He was running for president of Ecuador. I apologize. I got that completely wrong, and I obviously need to do better. Evil. Evil. That is how the mayor of Los Angeles describes Texas Governor Greg Abbott's decision to ship 37 migrants who had just arrived in Texas from Venezuela shipped them to Los Angeles knowing that Hurricane Hillary was heading for California. The migrants were placed on a bus in Brownsville, Texas on Sunday evening at 5 p.m. They arrived in Los Angeles 24 hours later as Hillary was pummeling the city. 14 children and one infant were among the refugees on board. Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass accused the Texas governor of purposely sending these families into harm's way, knowing full well they would be driving into one of the worst storms Los Angeles has ever, ever suffered. Uh, Specifically at a time when Greg Abbott knew that the governor, Gavin Newsom, was asking everybody to stay off the roads. Texas has now shipped more than 31,940 migrants out of Texas to sanctuary cities such as New York City, Chicago, Philadelphia, Denver, Los Angeles, and Washington, D.C. A 66-year-old store owner in Lake Arrowhead, California, was shot over the weekend, allegedly by a 27-year-old man who took exception to her displaying a gay pride flag in her window. The suspect was later killed in a shootout with police, who now say the man had taken to Twitter in the past year to attack LGBTQ groups, Jews, and he retweeted posts from Jordan Peterson and Matt Walsh. Back to our top story. This is the attorney, Stanley Woodward, on on the right. Now, I annoy a lot of my listeners when I keep saying Stanley Woodward, Stanley Woodward, Stanley Woodward. Maybe I'm a little obsessed with this. Uh, Look, if you want to understand Trump's crimes, follow the legal fees. Stanley Woodward, lawyer... And he is kept on retainer by Donald Trump's Save America Super PAC, which has raised hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars since Election Day 2020, all part of Donald Trump's election defense fund. The money was called an election defense fund, but it all went into his Save America Super PAC. This is essentially wire fraud. I'm surprised Donald Trump has not yet been indicted for wire fraud. It is against the law to raise hundreds of millions of dollars over the Internet claiming election fraud when you have no evidence that there was election fraud. Donald Trump, the supposed billionaire, asked his donors to help him fight and prove voter fraud. And nobody knows where that money has gone. As I pointed out on yesterday's program, it didn't go towards paying Rudy Giuliani or his former police chief, Bernard Carrick. 
even though immediately after the 2020 presidential election, Bernard Carrick and Rudy Giuliani hit the road and traveled around America trying to prove voter fraud. Rudy finally got $350,000 from the Save America PAC. That's it. Bernard Carrick never got paid. That super PAC is refusing to pay any of the mounting legal fees for any of Trump's co-defendants in the Washington, D.C. indictment and the Georgia indictment. He's paying the legal fees for his frightened underlings, right? The gardener, the, uh, the valet, but he's not helping the lawyers who were indicted. He isn't helping anybody. And we're talking about millions and millions of dollars in legal fees for, you know, 19, 21 people. Where has all that money go? Where, 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 where has all the money gone? Uh, it didn't go towards his first wife, Ivana's grave. Where is all the money going? I'm obsessed with Stanley Woodward, and I'm obsessed with Ivana Trump's grave. And everybody should be obsessed with Ivana Trump's grave. She died last year. Uh, she's the mother of Donald's three imbeciles. This is actual video. I played it yesterday. I'm going to keep playing this. It's actual video from the Daily Mail of Ivana Trump's grave out on the back nine of Donald Trump's Bedminster golf course. This tells you everything. How is this remotely possible? Take a look at this. How can Don Jr., Ivana, and Eric be okay with their father dumping their mom's body into the dirt with not even really a headstone, right? What does that tell you? It tells me that money is passing through Donald Trump in one door and going out through the other. And he gets to keep none of it. He is completely broke. Donald Trump is completely broke. Uh, whoever he owes money to lets him keep up the appearances, right? That, you know, uh, you, can, you can have your suits, the tanning spray on the private jet, because all those accoutrements convince fools that he's rich and he can continue his massive wire fraud scheme of tricking people into sending him money, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to investigate non-existent voter fraud. But who is getting the money? Not Ivana's corpse and certainly not Donald Trump, right? If he had money just for appearance sake, he would spring for a grave for Ivana. How can a billionaire leave his first wife, the mother of his three children, to spend eternity in essentially an unmarked pauper's grave. Who's getting all the money he raised? Hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for the Save America PAC. Who's getting the money? I don't know. I know Stanley Woodward, the lawyer on retainer, is getting some of it, a couple hundred thousand dollars. I'll be talking a little bit more about Stanley Woodward in a second. But where, oh, where did the hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars that Trump raised to investigate voter fraud, where did that money end up? He never found any voter fraud. You know, he had that big announcement scheduled for Monday where he's going to reveal a 100-page report that proves voter fraud in Georgia. He had to cancel it. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars raised to prove voter fraud, and he couldn't even put out a 100-page report as promised to prove voter fraud? Something isn't right. Bernard Carrick, the former police chief under Rudy, who went on the you know, start traveling, looking for voter fraud. Uh, he says, Bernard Carrick says, Trump hasn't paid him a cent for his work. And we are getting reports that Bernard Carrick, Bernie's Bernie, uh, 
at Rudy's, when Rudy was mayor, Bernard Carrick was the police commissioner. Uh, there's reports that Bernard Carrick testified before Jack Smith's special uh, grand jury in D.C. There are reports that Carrick also wants to know where all that money went. It looks like Jack Smith wants to know where all that money went. We are talking about hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars from small donors. Wire fraud. What is the next set of indictments coming out of Jack Smith's office? Wire fraud. And where did the money go? Where did the money go? Well, I told you I was going to talk about the Durham report and the Mueller report. Where did the money go? Let's talk about Crossfire Hurricane. I'm not talking about the Rolling Stones. Crossfire Hurricane was the code name for the original FBI investigation looking into Russia's interference with the 2016 presidential campaign. The investigation, Crossfire Hurricane, began on July 31st, 2016. If you remember, Obama was president and Hillary was running against Trump. And all of Barack Obama's intelligence agencies, including the FBI, they were all blinking red. They were all getting reports that Vladimir Putin is interfering with this election. Why? Because he wants Donald Trump elected president. Okay? So, eventually Trump won the 2016 election, barely. He lost the popular vote, and he uh, won the electoral college, and the FBI continued with Crossfire Hurricane. Obama was still president, and uh, they, the FBI is an independent agency, and they continued Crossfire uh, Hurricane, and then Donald Trump became president, and he fired the head of the FBI, James Comey, because James Comey wouldn't stop looking into Russian collusion, Russian interference, Russia gate, right? And that led to the Mueller investigation. And Robert Mueller, former head of the FBI, looked into Russia gate and he issued his report in 2019. He issued his final report in 2019, the Mueller report. All right, I'm going to be talking about the Mueller report. I'm going to remind you what the Mueller report is, how it relates to the Durham report, and how this all possibly relates to the indictments that are coming out of Miami, Washington, D.C., and Georgia, and how it relates to my original question, where did all the money go? Where did all the money go? Donald Trump has raised hundreds of millions of dollars to investigate voter fraud. Where did the money go? Okay, the Mueller report. Let me, let me quickly remind you the Mueller report because it's hard to keep track. Okay, Bill Barr was Donald Trump's attorney general. And he rewrote the Mueller report's summation. Now, there have been a lot of myths. A lot of myths have materialized as to what was actually in the Mueller report. It's not classified. You don't need to go down to Bedminster Country Club in New Jersey and pry Donald Trump with Diet Cokes until he lets you read it. The, the, the Mueller report is online. And there are 200 pages inside the Mueller report that specifically outline the numerous links between Russia and Donald Trump's presidential campaign in 2016. The Mueller report says a Russian intelligence agency probably 
run by the Wagner Group, the infamous Wagner Group. The Mueller report says a Russian intelligence agency carried on a massive intrusion into social media, American social media, using bots to trick Americans into voting for Trump over Hillary. Is that the reason Hillary lost? Absolutely not. But it's still illegal. It is still illegal for the for Putin and his intelligence agencies to try to interfere with our elections. And it is definitely illegal for members of Trump's campaign to solicit filth from Putin's intelligence agency to solicit filth, dirt on Hillary Clinton. That is against the law. OK, now Mueller in the Mueller report concluded that Vladimir Putin orchestrated this election interference because Putin thought Trump would be would be a better president for Putin than Hillary would be. Mueller said in the report that in June of 2016, high-level Trump campaign advisors and officials like Donald Trump Jr., who arranged the meeting, uh, there was a big meeting, uh, Donald Trump arranged it, uh, the uh, then campaign manager, Paul Manafort, now a convicted felon who had to be pardoned by Donald Trump. He attended the meeting, and so did Jared Kushner, who should be a convicted felon, but he's not. They all met illegally in June of 2016 with Russian nationals inside Trump Tower for the said purpose of getting dirt on Hillary Clinton that had been discovered by Russian intelligence agencies. I don't know if you remember the the email that Donald Trump wrote back to the guy setting up the meeting. If if it is what it sounds like, I love it. We've Russian Donald Trump Jr. was told Russian intelligence has dirt on Hillary. They want to give it to you guys. And Donald Trump Jr. said, we'll have a meeting at Trump Tower. I love it. Against the law. It's against the law. That meeting was illegal. Taking meetings uh, to solicit dirt from a foreign national about your political opponent is illegal. Now, whether or not there was actual actionable dirt on Hillary is irrelevant. It violates campaign finance law because that dirt has a monetary value. It's called a contribution in kind. It, that's federal uh, election campaign finance law would refer to that as a contribution in kind, even though it's not money, it's dirt. And we all know Trump's money is dirty. So why shouldn't dirt have a... Uh... Anyway, uh, it is against the law to take political donations in cash or in kind from foreigners especially foreign governments, and especially from their intelligence agencies. Now, Mueller, in the report, said he couldn't put a price on the dirt because he didn't know what exactly it was. In order for it to rise to the level of a felony, the dirt had to be worth about $25,000, and he couldn't appraise the dirt. Had he indicted Donald Trump, then they could have appraised the, the value of the dirt and found out what exactly was being offered by Russians. But he wasn't allowed to indict Donald Trump. He concluded in the Mueller report, he concluded that he was unable to prove or disprove that Donald Trump himself had been part of this collusion with Russia. But Mueller in the report said there was... In the second part of the Mueller report, Mueller says there was most definitely obstruction of justice 
on Trump's part. The entire second half of the Mueller report is a blueprint for prosecuting Donald Trump for obstruction of justice. We all know that Donald Trump fired his FBI director, James Comey, and he tried to fire Mueller. But when he tried to fire Mueller, his White House lawyers threatened to quit, so he couldn't fire Mueller. So, is obstruction of justice, which Mueller says, the second half of his report says, if he could indict Trump, but I can't, I would, there is a blueprint for prosecuting him for obstruction of justice. Now, is obstruction of justice worse than Russian collusion? Of course it is. Why was Trump obstructing justice? Why did he fire FBI Director James Comey? Why did he try to fire James, uh, 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 Robert Mueller? He was trying to hide collusion and God knows what else. The cover-up is worse than the crime because it proves the guilty mind. That's why they always say it's not the crime, it's the cover-up. The cover-up is worse than the crime because it proves that there are four, far more crimes being committed than we know about. That's why you're covering it up. And that's the second half of the Mueller report, a blueprint for prosecuting Donald Trump for obstruction of justice. But Bill Barr buried the Mueller report. He killed the findings. I mean, you can read the Mueller report, but he was the attorney general, so he gets the last word, and he decides whether or not anybody gets prosecuted, and people move on. If nobody's getting prosecuted, the media, everybody just moves on, and so the story dies. Why did Bill Barr kill the Mueller report? Well, there's several reasons. Uh, he believes in the unitary executive theory of the presidency. Uh, he's a fascist. The unitary theory of the, the presidency, he believes that the second you're the president, you have the power pretty much of a king. Unless, of course, the president is a Democrat, and then let's get him for lying about a blowjob. He buried collu Russian collusion. He buried Russiagate. And because he did that, it automatically became received wisdom among Republicans and lazy Democrats, some of my friends, some lazy friends of mine. It became received wisdom that the whole Russian collusion thing was made up. It was not made up. Bill Barr killed it and everybody went and went along. They all went along with it. If it was made up, if uh, Crossfire Hurricane, if it was all garbage, John Durham, the special counsel who Bill Barr appointed to look into the origins of Crossfire Hurricane, he would have found proof. He, John Durham, the special counsel, was salivating over an opportunity to please his master and prove that Obama and the FBI and the deep dark state, they were spying on Obama, Obama's and Hillary's political opponents. Couldn't find anything. Do you remember the Durham report? It's, I, it's really hard for me. I know my listeners are smarter than I am and they can keep track of this stuff, but I had to spend the day going, okay, the Durham report. What? I, I you know, okay. Hard to believe. I, I'm gonna, I was shocked. Things happen very quickly, and it's hard to be a good citizen when you can't keep track of all this garbage. This May, can you think, can you remember May of this year? I can't. I had to go get a cup of coffee and start reading today. In May of this year, Remember Russiagate? Remember collusion? In May of this year, 
After a four-year investigation, special counsel John Durham, now he was appointed by Bill Barr, uh, special counsel John Durham, he's a Trump-era holdover in the Justice Department, he finally delivered his long-anticipated Durham report. The Durham report. I kept hearing from my republic, wait till the Durham report. When you read the Durham report, you're going to see about Obama and Hillary and the deep, dark state and how they control everything. Just wait till you read the Durham report. Well, the Durham report came out, took four years. And uh, then John Durham, special counsel, testified before Congress in May. Remember this? I couldn't believe it. It felt like it was 10 years ago. He testified before Congress. It did not go well. Did not go well. Republicans were pissed off. Uh, Congressman Matt Gates just vilified and crucified him during the hearings. Why? Because John Durham found nothing. Matt Gates, how could you find nothing? There was nothing. I didn't. Find. What do you mean you found nothing? They couldn't believe that, first off, that John Durham was going to be honest. <laughs> I mean, Bill Barr appointed you, for Christ's sake. You couldn't find, you couldn't plant some evidence? Couldn't find anything. Uh, how could that be? Go back and watch the hearings. They're hysterical. You got to remember Crossfire Hurricane, the investigation into Russian collusion, began during the Obama administration, 2016, right in the middle of the presidential campaign, right? The Republicans, their story, the way they protect Trump, Jim Jordan, right? Comers, Matt Gates, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, they said that the, the Durham report is going to prove that Obama ordered the FBI to investigate Russian collusion because Obama wanted to spy on his political enemies like Donald Trump so Hillary could win. That's projection. That, that's what Nixon does. That's what Trump does. Uh, that's what Republicans do. So they figure if we do it, they do it. Uh, no, they don't. Democrats don't do that. Anyway, Durham, again, John Durham, special counsel, was appointed by, appointed by Trump's attorney general, Bill Barr, immediately after the Mueller report came out. OK, this was a stroke of genius. I was hoping for a different kind of stroke for Bill Barr, but he had a stroke of genius. I'll kill the Mueller report. I'll just tell people nothing to see. Here. I'll lie. And then I will take umbrage and say, we have to get to the bottom of this. Why did, why, did, why did the FBI and the Justice Department put poor Donald Trump through all this collusion, the, the Russiagate and the collusion? I, even though the Mueller report said there was collusion and a cover-up, I'm going to appoint John Durham as special counsel to look into the FBI and Barack Obama to, to see how this massive conspiracy to spy on political enemies started, right? I, I mean, it's, you know, Bill Barr is pretty smart for an evil fascist. Uh, so Barr announced this investigation into Crossfire Hurricane to discover why the FBI began its investigation into links between Putin and Donald Trump. Because... Uh, why, why did the FBI look into it? Well, there was collusion, but, you know, it's in the Mueller report. But Barr wisely decided to kick up dirt. He and Trump pretended to be furious that Barack Obama, when he was president, ordered his intelligence agencies and the FBI uh, to uh, claim that there was collusion. There was collusion. Read the Mueller report. Uh, doesn't matter what's in the Mueller report. Uh, Barr announced there would be a Durham report to 
prove that everything in the Mueller report, uh, if you read it, was wrong, basically. John uh, Durham became special counsel, and he began investigating Crossfire Hurricane. And uh, again, we know from the Mueller report there was probable cause, actionable evidence to issue wiretaps and, and start listening in on Trump operatives because they were colluding with the Russians. There were links between the Trump campaign and Vladimir Putin. It's in the Mueller report. In fact, Mueller in his report said he would not recommend indicting Donald Trump only because it's the Justice Department's official policy since 1975 not to indict a sitting president. He said in the Mueller report, I cannot recommend an indictment because the Justice Department doesn't indict sitting presidents. Again, Mueller clearly proved a cover-up. And what was Trump covering up? Collusion with Putin during the 2016 presidential election. Okay? Putin, in the Mueller report, clearly wanted Donald Trump in the Oval Office. So, Bill Barr, once again, so we remember what the Durham report is. I'm repeating this. Bill Barr, after the Mueller report, to further kill it, decided to rewrite history. He rewrote the Mueller report and said it cleared Trump. It didn't. But to make it look like it really cleared Trump, he demanded answers to phony questions. How was it possible that the FBI and the Justice Department wasted millions of dollars on a wild goose chase trying to prove Russian interference in our elections. So we are going to appoint John Durham as a special counsel and send him on a wild goose chase, spending, a mil spending millions of dollars to prove that the FBI went on a wild goose chase, wasting millions of dollars trying to prove Russian interference. That's what the Durham report was. It was a cover story for, for Bill Barr and Trump. That was the idea behind the Durham report. But can't stress this enough to my lazy friends. Read the Mueller report. He clearly states that Crossfire Hurricane was not a wild goose chase. Okay. So John Durham went around the world and Barr joined him in Italy to get to the bottom of this. There was nothing. Durham found nothing. And that's why back in May of this year, God, it, it really does feel like it could have been 20 years ago. Republicans were, were just furious with Durham. Uh, he issues his report, nothing. If you read the report, uh, he compares and contrasts how the FBI treated Hillary vis-a-vis -vis Donald Trump. No crimes, no crimes, nothing. Where were the indictments? We were expecting my friends, my Republican friends, wait till you, the Durham report and the indictment and the, it, nothing. There were, uh, Durham brought criminal indictments against three people. He lost two of those trials. They were weak. The third case, well, he was able to get a confession out of a former FBI attorney named Kevin Kleinsmith who admitted he confessed that he altered an email to expedite a surveillance warrant on former Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. Aha, that proves that Obama was spying on his political enemies. Well, not really. Uh, he altered that email in 2017 when uh, Donald Trump was president. So the only thing Durham got was a, con a confession from uh, FBI attorney Kevin Kleinsmith, no prison sentence, community service. Uh, that was it. Now, the whole Durham report was nothing. They couldn't prove 
I was guaranteed, I was promised that Durham was going to prove that Obama had politicized and weaponized the FBI and the CIA. He w Remember, Durham went before Jim Jordan's big committee looking into the weaponization and the politicization of the deep, dark state by the Democrats. And Durham said, well, they're really, hmm, hmm. Four years that went on. Durham, four years. He was going to blow the lid off the Obama, Ms. Hillary, the FBI, the deep, dark state. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's Bill Barr. He was protecting Donald Trump. Bill Barr. Uh, Bill Barr's father, by the way, was the headmaster at a very exclusive private school in New York City called Dalton. And he gave... Jeffrey Epstein, his first teaching job. Jeffrey Epstein taught at, at Dalton. He taught, taught calculus. Um, and uh, he gave him a job, even though Epstein never graduated from college. It's amazing how far he can go without graduating from college. They loved him at Harvard. Epstein never went to Harvard. Uh, Barr's father, Don, Don Barr, uh, he shared an obsession uh, for minors with Jeffrey Epstein. You all know this. Don Barr, Bill Barr's father, wrote uh, science fiction stories. He wrote a book called Space Relations in 1973. It's a science fiction novel about a planet ruled by oligarchs who engage in child sex slavery. That would be... Uh, Donald Barr, Bill Barr's father, who during World War II served in the OSS. That was the precursor to the CIA. Anyway, uh, that's a picture of Donald Barr on the left with his young protege, Jeffrey Epstein. Doesn't Donald Barr look like L. Ron Hubbard in that picture? Looks like that's uh, a young Jeffrey Epstein. I'm surprised he could keep his hands off himself. Epstein, uh, if you remember, uh, used to tape uh, all his friends having sex with children. And the FBI, if you remember back in 2019, uh, they raided Jeffrey Epstein's home. Uh, there was a safe and there were videos. And then he died mysteriously in a jail cell and nobody knows what happened to those tapes. Nobody can find the tapes. You know, uh, Jeffrey Epstein used to have a lot of friends come over to that New York apartment. Prince Andrew, Bill Gates, all those bankers from J.P. Morgan Chase, Alan Dershowitz. No tapes. Can't find the tapes. Who was in charge of the Justice Department back then? Hmm. Oh, yeah, Bill Barr, who literally rewrote the Mueller report to protect Donald Trump and got away with it, even though it was right in plain sight. I mean, it was like, there's the Mueller report. This is what Robert Mueller is saying. I'm Bill Barr. I'm the attorney general. Let me tell you what. Robert Mueller is really saying, right? Get away with it. It's massive cover-up. The Mueller report, massive cover-up. Don't believe what you're reading in the Mueller report. Believe my summation of the Mueller report. I say Mueller cleared Donald Trump, period, full stop. That was the largest crowd for any presidential inauguration in the history of America, period, full stop. Don't believe what you see with your eyes. Don't believe what you're reading. I'm telling you what to believe. Uh, yeah. Oh, the tapes for Jeffrey Epstein? Who was Jeffrey? I don't remember. Jeffrey Epstein? Yeah, I, I'm 
so busy as your attorney general, I, I don't know what happened to those tapes. Uh, have you checked underneath the seat cushion? Because I'm very busy here as Trump's attorney general. Really, Ehud Barak, the Israeli prime minister, used to be a frequent guest of Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, anyway, I don't know. I don't know uh, what happened to the tapes. Okay. So what does this have to do with Stanley Woodward, the lawyer? I'm not quite sure. I have an idea. What does it have to do with Russiagate? What does this have to do with Vladimir Putin? I'm not sure exactly. But I know that Vladimir Putin wanted Trump in the Oval Office because Trump owed him something. I'm not saying... Russia is the reason Trump won in 2016. Hillary Clinton was a flawed candidate. I'm just saying it doesn't matter if Russia is responsible for Donald Trump getting elected in 2016. I'm saying Russia got exactly what it wanted. Vladimir Putin got exactly who he wanted in the Oval Office. And why did Vladimir Putin want Donald Trump in the Oval Office. I think it's a little related, tangentially, to Stanley Woodward and the Save America PAC and all those legal fees, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars flowing right in front of Trump and then out the door. Where's it going? What happened to the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars that Donald Trump's Save America PAC raised since he lost in 2020, right? Give me your money. We, it's the Election Defense Fund. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There have been endless reports on Trump's finances. Uh, now, again... There's no question that throughout the years, billions of dollars have passed through Donald Trump's hands. He's also done, what, six, seven bankruptcies, those IRS audits that are supposed to take place when you're president. They still have not been finished. And uh, according to the New York Times, they're impossible to finish those audit audits because Trump has so many shell corporations the IRS lacks the human resources to un untangle all of them. Uh, so from what most of us have read, Trump ran for president because it was a branding exercise. He didn't think he could win, but his name is worth money to his creditors. As long as he's famous, that name is worth something to the creditors. That's what the bankers all decided. Keep him famous. He can keep making money to pay back his creditors, okay? Why is so much money going in one door and out the other when it comes to Donald Trump? Well, he owes money, and it's not to Deutsche Bank. I mean, Deutsche Bank is fronting for the people Donald Trump owes money to, but he doesn't owe Deutsche Bank money. It just sounds more anodyne than uh, who he really owes money to. He owes money, from what I've read, to Russian-Ukrainian oligarchs. And he was supposed to launder money for them. That was his job. He's, or was in real estate, and Manhattan real estate is a gigantic money, opera uh, money laundering operation. We've been through this, right? I come to New York City, all the luxury apartments here, you know, $40 million apartments with views of the park, empty, empty. Somebody owns them, but they're empty. Who owns them? Mobsters from Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, wherever. And... Trump is one of the people who cleans their money. And this is not a thread you want to pull on. 
This is why Mueller kind of backed away from the money laundering, because you pull on this thread, the whole real estate market in New York City and the country comes crumbling down because this is really New York City is just one big money laundering operation and tax haven for gangsters around the world. Uh, so Trump was cleaning their money. Trump was cleaning their money, and he couldn't help himself. This is what I suspect. He could not help himself. He sees the pile of money, and he goes, mine, mine. It's just sitting. They won't notice. It's, it's just a billion dollars. Mine. I'll take this billion and pay, use it to pay back the other mobster I s stole from. He, he has no impulse control, right? I've been saying this about him for years, but one of my listeners just put it so, so succinctly. It's a log line for a movie, and it's true. Trump stole from the mob. That's all you need to know. Somebody wrote that to me in the comments section, and like a crystal bullet to my skull, I went, wow, that's it. Trump stole from the mob, and when you steal from the mob, that's it. You're done. Uh, and that's, I'm convinced from what I've been reading, that's what happened. He stole, but he stole from the wrong mobsters, not, not, uh, not the kind of mob, not Don Corleone. He, he stole from like Wagner group mobsters. You should, uh, read David K. Johnston. He's been reporting on Donald Trump's finances or lack thereof for decades. Money goes in Donald Trump's front door, goes right out the back door, just passes through. And sometimes he can't take it anymore, so he steals a little, little of it, and then he's, he's even in more trouble. Brings me back to my obsession, Ivana's grave. Why does he not have money to bury Ivana? Why? Look at this. Think of this for a second. I'll, t I'll tell you, this is my theory. I'm obsessed with Ivana's grave. This is my theory. Imagine you're a small-time degenerate gambler, okay? And, you know, you owe your bookie 20 grand. Remember Davey from The Sopranos on the sporting good stores and he got into a game? with Richie, the executive game, and uh, he owed Richie money, but he ended up in the executive poker game with Frank Sinatra Jr., and Richie says, you have money for this game, but you don't have money to pay me back, and Richie wanted to beat him up, and Tony stopped him. That's basically what's going on with Donald Trump. He's like a, a degenerate gambler. He owes a bookie 20 grand. He's missing the vig. Uh, Donald Trump is getting calls from Richie and, you know, where's the money? And Trump is saying, I'm good for it. I'm good. I swear, I, I just don't have it right now, but I'm good for it. And then Trump's wife dies and Richie sees Trump spending, what, 50 grand, 100 grand on a mausoleum for her. Richie's going to show up at Trump's apartment and say, you have your, you have that money for your dead wife, but not for me. This is why I, this is why I can't get over Ivana's essentially unmarked grave. It, it, it's he's signaling to whoever he owes money to. I, I swear to you, every penny is going going to pay you back. Look, look at the way I buried my. My first wife, the mother of my three kids, I swear to you, every penny, I'm, pa I'm paying you back. I'm paying you back. And he's doing everything he can to pay whoever he stole the money from back because he stole from the mob. He stole. I love that. It's so simple. He stole from the mob. I wish I came up with that. One of my listeners did. 
It's just so perfect. He stole from the money, from the mob. And now he's just desperately trying to get money to make good on it. And knowing Trump, he's so stupid, he probably steals from other mobsters to pay the other mobsters back. He's got some pyramid scheme going on. Uh, and he's doing anything he can, uh, like, you know, getting reelected. There are ways to pay back the mob when you're elected president. He raised hundreds of millions of dollars since he lost the presidency. Nobody knows where it went. Nobody's legal fees are getting paid. Nobody knows. Now think about this. Why would a man pushing 80 work so hard to steal the 2020 election? At some point you go, hey, my friend John Ross was talking about this. At, at some point you go, I lost. I'm going to go cash in now. I proved a point. It's, it's kind of if he had gotten out when he did, he could have said, hey, the vaccine, that's mine. I'm a success. And then just cash in. He needed, he owed so much to the mob, he had to stay in the White House. You know, they were still, after January 6th, the next day, they were still breaking into the voting machines in Coffee County, Georgia, to try to, to, try to win. Uh, what was that about? Why was he fighting so hard? Same reason Ivana's grave is just a pile of dirt. He was proving to whomever he owed the money to that I'm trying. Look at me. I'm still trying. I'm trying to get back in the Oval Office so I can pay you back. Nobody works that hard to steal an election unless they're trying to prove something to someone. Someone they owe billions to because they stole it. All right. Stanley Woodward. I know, I'm obsessed. Stanley Woodward, Stanley Woodward, Stanley Woodward. He's the, the lawyer on the right. I'm not the only one obsessed with Stanley Woodward. Special Counsel Jack Smith this week has made it clear he wants to know what's up with Stanley Woodward, Stanley Woodward, Stanley Woodward. Stanley Woodward is on retainer. He's paid through your donations through the Save America PAC to provide legal counsel to anyone who worked for Donald Trump and anyone who's going to keep their mouth shut. Right? He's not helping any of the lawyers, any of those defendants in Georgia. Trump isn't paying their legal fees. Uh... He's only helping low-level flunkies who know too much. Uh, so before I go, I just want to review this big story about the IT manager at Mar-a-Lago who flipped. I think this is a much bigger story than uh, we all realize. Uh, now, that's Walt Malta, Trump's valet, walking into federal court in Miami. And that's Stanley Woodward with his arm around him. And Stanley Woodward was also representing in the Miami indictments, the mishandling of classified documents. He was also representing Yuskil Tavares. That's the gentleman's name. This is the guy who flipped. Yuskil Tavares. Now, you tell me if this sounds kosher, okay? Yuskil Tavares seems to have been the IT guy at Mar-a-Lago. He would monitor the security cameras. And if Donald Trump was hiding classified material from the FBI, if he was ordering Walt Nalta, his valet, to move boxes and hide them from the FBI, then Yuskil Tavares, the guy watching the surveillance cameras, he would, he would have seen it, right? He'd have the video. He'd have the video. And Tavares, Yuskil Tavares, had an attorney named Stanley Woodward, right? 
And Stanley Woodward walked, from what I read of the filing by Jack Smith's office on Tuesday, Stanley Woodward, Stanley Woodward walked with Yusko Tavares, head of the IT, head of the surveillance cameras, walked with Yusko Tavares into the grand jury in Washington, D.C., and Yusko Tavares lied. He said, nope, nobody moved any boxes, not that I saw, and nobody tried to get me to erase any of the surveillance tapes. And according to reporting in yesterday's Politico and the new filing by Jack Smith's office, Yesko Tavares felt bad about lying before a grand jury and said, I don't want Stanley Woodward as my lawyer anymore, but I can't afford a lawyer, but I don't want Stanley Woodward. So Yesko Tavares was provided with a public defender And according to Tuesday's court filing, he then flipped. He's now cooperating with the prosecutors. He retracted his previous testimony before the grand jury. And apparently, I don't know if this is for certain, but he's going to be testifying against Donald Trump now. So I would assume he's going to say, yes, they did tamper with the evidence Yes, I saw it on the surveillance videos. And yes, they asked me to erase it. Uh, The really uh, horrible thing about this is that Stanley Woodward clearly uh, is in a very uncomfortable position. He was Walt Nauta's client and this guy Tavares' client. And he's in a weird position because the client who just flipped is going to testify and Stanley Woodward is going to have to cross-examine his former client. And it's a clear conflict of interest, and it suggests that Stanley Woodward was never working for Walt Nalta, Tavares, or any of the other underlings who went before the grand jury. It suggests that he might be orchestrating a grand silence to protect the person who's paying his salary. So this is huge. This is huge. This is Elmer Stewart Rhodes. He is the Yale Law School graduate who founded the Oath Keepers. And he is now doing time for seditious conspiracy. He was found guilty of helping to orchestrate the actual attack on the Capitol, January 6th. And this is his co-conspirator, Kelly Meggs, on the left. He founded the Florida chapter of the Oath Keepers, and he oversaw the Oath Keepers' outreach to the Proud Boys in the lead-up to January 6th. He worked very closely with Stuart Rhodes, and like Stuart Rhodes, Kelly Meggs, was found guilty of seditious conspiracy for the role he played on January 6th. He's doing 12 years. He was sentenced last this May. When Trump lost, Kelly Meggs reportedly, according to the testimony, texted his wife and said, quote, I'm going on a killing spree. Nancy Pelosi is first. That was the trial this year. And he was sentenced in May. As I've said before, he had an attorney in May of this year. The attorney who represented him as he fought to stay out of prison, fought the charges of seditious conspiracy. His attorney was Stanley Woodward. 
Does that seem right to you? Does that smell right to you? Stanley Woodward has represented most of the witnesses in the classified documents case. He has represented other White House officials when they were brought up before congressional committees and other grand juries. Why is Stanley Woodward representing an oath keeper, a very violent oath keeper? Right. Stanley Woodward represents all the people closest to Donald Trump, Trump's valet, Walt Nauta, as well as one of the Oath Keepers. He represented Peter Navarro when Navarro had to testify, and he represents an Oath Keeper. Uh, as I've been saying, the criminal indictments in Georgia and in Washington, D.C. are indictments of the entire legal profession. Five out of the six co-conspirators named in the criminal indictment in D.C. are lawyers, maybe six. Nearly half the defendants indicted last week in Georgia were lawyers. It's becoming increasingly obvious that when it comes to Donald Trump, lawyers are all in on it. Is Stanley Woodward in on it? You know what? I don't think so. It, it, it's just too fishy. It's too out in the open. Nobody could be that stupid. Then again, Bill Barr let everybody read the Mueller report and said, this is what it really says. I'd like to know what's going on with... Uh, Stanley Woodward. Trump is in a lot of trouble. Trump is broke. People are going to be flipping. He's, you don't pay the legal fees for Rudy, for John Eastman, for Kenneth Cheesebro, for Jenna Ellis. He's in a lot of trouble. People are going to be flipping. Iowa is months away. He's in a lot of trouble. Because he stole from the mob and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars were raised online as part of his election defense fund. And nobody knows what happened to it. The Save America PAC is supposed to be for his presidential campaign, but it's broke. How do you run a presidential campaign if you don't have money. Now, in the past, he's been able to get free publicity. But the publicity he gets now is he's getting publicity. It's another witness flipped today. Donald Trump was indicted again. He needs that Save America PAC money to advertise and for a ground game to fight the bad publicity. But he's broke. The Save America PAC, you know, they gave $60 million to another Trump super PAC, a real super PAC that's trying to get Trump elected. But Trump was telling people not to give to that super PAC. He was saying give to the Save America PAC. Why? Because the Save America PAC is his piggy bank and it's empty. And they, they went and said, we need the $60 million back. We need it for the Save America PAC. And they're saying it's for legal fees. Whose legal fees? He's not paying anybody's legal fees. He's paying Walt Nalt. He's paying the, the gardener at Mar-a-Lago. That's the only legal fees he's paying. Is Stanley Woodward that expensive? To hundreds and hundreds of million dollars in legal fees? Are lawyers that expensive? It, we have a serious problem with lawyers if they're costing Donald Trump hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. So I have a lot of friends who think Russiagate is over. It's not. They think it was a waste of energy, of time, and it was just the Democrats making excuses for what a piss-poor candidate Hillary was. Uh, yeah, maybe. 
But I suspect if you look really hard, you will discover where that money went. All the Save America PAC money went. And uh, may not be Vladimir Putin's pocket, but it's some Russian oligarchs. It, Trump presidency, his, his presidency, his political career will end where it started with Vladimir Putin. I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak. Yes, I'm obsessed with Ivana's grave and Stanley Woodward. Uh, next, uh, we'll talk about the debate tomorrow. Thank you to the moderators in the chat room. Please like this video. Please share it with Stanley Woodward. Please share it with your friends. Let's get a grave for Ivana. Let's raise money for Ivana to get her a decent, a proper tombstone, right? We should do that for her. Please subscribe to my newsletter and we'll bring back office hours in September. Thank you again. I'll see you tomorrow.